So like the cattle float. Covering up the pit again because we're done with it. Stops dirt and debris and anything going in there. We put a uh, tarpaulin over the top as well. Heavier than they look. The oats in behind here, they're all going, or they're starting to go away tomorrow. So I need to shift these boxes out of the way. These are egg boxes. So during COVID, we were having real issues trying to get them. And we ended up ordering via different people. And then they all arrived at once and we've got, we've still got so many of them. I think I worked it out once and we had boxes to hold over one point something million eggs. I can get into this bay now. So this is a seed oats. This pile and that pile were all meant to be seed but that pile had loads of volunteer barley, so we only rogued this much. It got rogued about four or five times. Cost a lot of money to rogue it all. We've actually pulled the plug on growing winter seed oats just because it doesn't work our system. It always ends up with a bit of volunteer barley and it seems to be getting worse. Just doesn't really fit in that well with the rotation, so we're pulling the plug on that and we're not gonna grow seed winter oats anymore. We'll still grow seed spring oats, still grow seed winter barley, spring barley, but yeah, pulling the plug on that. Shut the door here. The oats I've just cleared, they're ready to go for tomorrow morning when the lorries arrive. This machine is desperately needing a wash, has been needing for a while. Right, that's better. Not perfect, it never is perfect. You can actually see the back end now. It's not completely caked in grime, grease and oil. Looks quite nice from the back end here. Big beefy tyres on it. Six. 20s are they? Yeah, 620 by 70s. There's 650s on the fence. The defender got a blitz as well. Once that actually dries though, you'll see all the scratches and all the all the badness. Looks amazing on a wet day. Opinions on the front end now. There was guards over the lights which were rusted to bits. Obviously new grills all around that are actually black. The other ones are all faded. Put those LEDs there. And then LED side lights and indicators. I have got black paint for the wheels, but I'm not decided whether I should just stick with silver. I think still silver probably looks a bit better. But they're all flaky and stuff, so they need sprayed something, some sort of colour. The bushes all need redone. Could do with new springs and shocks all round. Bit of corrosion at the back end. Don't know whether just to ignore it all just now and save up for a couple of years and get a full galvanised chassis on it. Top this tractor off with diesel. Only needing about half a tank. Here's the Doug. Hey Doug. What's up here? With all the rain we've had, the machinery shed's fairly full. Drill's not moving, sprayer's not moving, combine's finished with, baler's finished with, hedge cutter. Tev's gonna put that on tomorrow. Dunk's gonna put the topper on tomorrow. It's too wet to plow, too wet to do much, to be honest. Kev did quite a lot of subsoiling last week. Um, we subsoil all our tram lines and the odd bit of end rig that's been ran on quite a lot. These legs they run deep in the soil at about an angle like that and travel like that and it just forces the ground upwards and the ground actually cracks and breaks apart. And obviously where the tractors have been driving, that's the bits that are really compacted and hard. So we do that to all the tram lines with this machine. It's a Heva, Heva subsoiler. Don't know if it's got specific numbers, but Good piece of kit, get on well with it. Verdistad, Rollers, Solitaire 8, Lemkin Drill, Hardy 3200 Commander. Commander 3200 Hardy Sprayer, that's what we're looking at upgrading at the moment. Combine, Lexian 6700, uh, Variant 360 Baylor, McConnell 5860 Hedge Cutter, Hoon RM320 Topper, couple of T7 210s, Lemkin Europol something 7. None of us are a fan of this plough. It's got a million types of different bolts. It's not that sturdy, like beefy. We've got a four for a plough and it is absolutely solid. Obviously this is an extra fur, so it's a bit more weight, but yeah, it's just not as sturdy and solid throughout. It's got a bit of a sag in it. Nutter. Just fill up the crew feeder, which you're currently sitting on right now. There we go. I've got
got a feed in two shifts, so I've just yoked up that trailer. I'm in one of the T7s today. I'm in the sprayer tractor. Not to go spraying, it's too wet and soggy in the fields, unfortunately. Currently, trailers abandoned everywhere. One, two, three, four. Just shimmying them about so they're not taking up loads of space. It's like real life, really slow paced Tetris. This one's full of soya, so it's quite a weight on the hitch and it's very, very slowly lifting it up. I don't want to go all the way up and lock it in in case I can't get it unlocked. Laurie's just arrived with roof joists for the back of all of this. It's amazing how in that direction they flex so much, but as soon as you sit them upright, you sit these upright. They're solid. A few lorries coming for oat seed today, but I'm trying to figure out new connections for the hedge cutter. Kev's got some hedge cutting to do, and he's obviously putting the hedge cutter on the fence for the first time. First stop, hopefully I'll get everything here. Didn't manage in tool station. Next stop, sellers, class dealership. Perfect. Sellers had everything I was needing. 250 amp connectors and um, quick connectors, two D plugs and some wire. We've got some nice shiny machines in. I fancy a four meter one of those. That was actually more successful than I was thinking. We could have taken the wires off the old tractor um, that he's moved from, but it'd be quite handy still to be able to use that tractor on the hedger. Kev started loading this lorry. I need to get the passport switcher in here. Kev's getting this lorry loaded. There's another one coming in half an hour. Um, so we'll just leave them to it. I need to go sort out the topper, see what's going on along there. Dunks caught some wire with, uh, with the topper. So I need to take the grinder along. Just caught on some wire, I think. So that's seed winter oats going in there. So it's heading off to Dodd Seed to be treated and then sent across the country to different farmers and different growers. Get some safety specs too. Here we are. Snick around here, hopefully there's no surprise holes. There's obviously been a surprise bit of wire anyway. The, the web. Took a wee gouge there with a the grinder, but other than that, quite a pile. Optic fibre. There we go, some of that stuff. Fibre optic. This fibre optic track, it's not actually connected up to anything yet, but you can see where they put it in. They put it in in the margin in this field and ran it from the road up there and somewhere down there. But they didn't even fill in the track that they've dug to put the cable in. The cable's down about hardly a foot. It comes along here and then it loops out through the hedge onto the main road. So they're obviously trying to put a junction in there, loops back and then heads off that direction again. And they just left a heap of it lying right there. And obviously it got caught because it was all buried in grass. Topper's fine now. It wasn't too bad actually because there's not really any metal in that. Um, it's all plastic, so it was easy cut, but there's some amount of it. Anyway, didn't take too long. It was just a 10, 15 minute job with a grinder and the bolt cutter. Plonkers, but one not filling in the hole. They've not buried it deep at all. If we ever take the margins back, that'll be caught with a plow. And they left a heap of it in the side of the field. I don't know how much um, optic fiber cable is. Is it expensive? I have no idea. I've never dealt with it. I've never searched how much it is. Is it expensive? That's not expensive anymore anyway. It's scrap. What do I do with this stuff now? Chuck it in the wheelie bin. You can see the wee glass fibers. Fiber optic, it's glass cable. It's that whole bit's glass. They send signals through the glass. So through those wee glass fibers, they send light signals. And basically the light travels along the fiber. And as long as there's not too much of an angle like that, that'd be too much of an angle. It just reflects along the inside of the wire and it never exits the wire. That's why they can't have big bends in them. Cause then it does then exit the glass. 
If you imagine I'm inside the wire right now and this is the edge of it, if the signals of light come at a shallow angle, they reflect off it. Whereas if they come at a harsh angle, they go through. So that's why it doesn't bend so much. So they send light signals and it just bounces its way along the inside of the cable. The technical lingo is to do with angles of refraction and things like that. I've actually just found out that what I was saying was kind of false. It is true for the glass fiber, but that angle is irrelevant because they put a cladding on it that reflects all the light back in irrespective of what angle is on um the cable and the light it doesn't matter kev's loaded another lorry in the time i was away so that's two bean there's one more on its way there goes the lorry number two scania seacliff that's the company that haul all that right this is the armrest of the hedge cutter here and this fitting needs to connect in to get power to it these gray ones are not the same size as the red ones so there's one supply to the armrest, one supply to the actual hedger, which isn't on yet. So I'm going to take these off, put a green one on here, and a grey one obviously on the other end. So I'm trying to get this off. These crimps slide through and hook over that wee plate there. So if we're using an O-ring pick, I'd have managed to get the first one. But they're tricky wee things. Right, I've got it off. I've got the positive in. There we go. Now, I went and asked for a male side, but they're universal. There's no female, no male. You just go in like that. Anyway, that's the armrest connection done. Bruiser's on the way, so it'll probably just arrive in a second. I'll leave Kev to finish these fittings. He's messing with some wires in the workshop. Laurie's just arrived for another load of oats. It's coming from down and around that corner. How much is left? Is there a full load there? Yeah, just about it. There, thereabouts. Oats are not very um, dense, like in comparison to barley wheat so there's quite a lot of volume to the weight so if we're looking for a 29 ton to fill a lorry there's quite a bit more volume than there is barley i think there's 30 percent more volume in the oats for the same weight because it's a seed crop the boy's just giving his lorry a good sweep lorry loaded there's oh there's hardly any left he's right full and this is all that's left in there right now is probably 600 kilo I think there'll be about 600 kilo in there and then there'll be another 50 lying on the ground. But it's fine because we've got the exact same variety over those bunker walls. Right, this 600 kilo, I'll just wake over this wall. It's like loading a lorry. The rest that's lying there, I'll need to abandon for now. Bruiser's just arrived to get some barley bruised for making up cattle feed. Let's get that bruiser filled up with barley. Once it's in the shed, there'll be no use dumping a pile out here. Job done, happy days. That's it, just winding down now. 10 ton bruised. We'll add some rapeseed pellets into this, some minerals, and that'll be good to go for the cattle. Actually did another two ton because I was forgetting we're kind of diluting the protein down a wee bit. When I was in a tool station, I bought a pile of, these are bullet connectors, also spade connectors. You do get those multi boxes, but you always get left for the same ones because you only ever use, well, we only ever use spades and bullets. There you go. Kev's been and got the hedge cutter. I think that means it's ready to go. Calves are kicking on. There's four of the five Anguses. There's some Charlies for you. Anguses are still ahead. Weight-wise, they were born first, though. But the Charlies are starting to kick on and catch up now. That one's a good beast in the back. From now on, the Charleys will grow at a quicker pace than these Angus as well. Hedgers all parked up. Okay, I've got a bit of hedging done, but that's it. Now on the fence and easy to yoke up now. Just took a wee bit of fiddling about with wires and making sure it was mounted properly. Otherwise, all good. Okay, we'll probably be cutting hedges tomorrow. Just it's too wet to do any field work yet. Looks good on the hedge cutter. I think, anyway. Anyway, oh, I still need to tidy up all that wire that's in the back there. Cheers for watching. See you tomorrow. Oh.